time. Okay, this is session three of Dungeon World Mary Abattoir, part of our We Hunt the Keepers campaign. I want to begin, as always, by just giving you guys a minute to um, talk about flags. If you have any flags that you would like to see hit this session, go ahead and bring that up. This session and the next session, I anticipate being very um, urban. I don't anticipate it being like dungeon crawly at all. I don't anticipate even a lot of fighting for that matter. Um, I do anticipate lots of stuff going on in this town, lots of NPC interactions and that kind of thing. So that's just to give you a sense of like where we're kind of at, especially because each of you has like your own kind of like really sharply defined motivation for being an Eingevida. And so um, it, it may even be that like you guys are split up a lot of the time too, which is okay. I mean, if you can, if we can find ways to get you all together, that's great. But if not, it's no big deal. So just kind of keep that in mind in terms of your flags. If you think you have a flag that would be particularly suitable for the way I've just presented this, then let us know what it is. Well, I think I'm gonna get in trouble already, but I can't hit my own flag. So, uh, my flags are get into a dangerous situation that I can protect you from, mm -hmm. get me to speak of my life beyond our mission, and trust me with a secret you would never tell anyone else. The, what might be a good way to set up that first flag is if one of the other characters wants to rescue the halfling and you yeah. have to kind of help with that, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. I can see that being a thing. Um, Archon and Weary, what do you guys think flag-wise? Um, probably believe a lie I've told you will come up because I'll need to slip away to the, to see my master and probably not be like, I'm going to see the shadow court now. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah. Um, I'm into that. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, that seems like a good thing to do. I suspect there's going to be lots of like secrets and lots, lots of secrets and lies going on, um, over the next two sessions. So, especially if weary begins to study the deal with the shadow vaults and the key that he has. I think that would, there, there'll be a lot of that. A lot of, a lot of opportunities for Weary to be duplicitous um, there. So uh, what do you right. think about Archon, uh, Garrett? I have two flags which are more mundane, at least from Archon's point of view. One is <laughs> exploring somebody's mind, <laughs> still mundane for Archon. But the, the third one is more metaphysical. Let, let me explore friendship. And um, I think you can't like program the story in that direction. I think it has to happen naturally, and it will, I'm pretty sure. But I can already say that I, I will push into the, the other two characters' directions in, in that sense. Hmm. See. I especially weary because they have been together for so long. Yeah. Couldn't sleep yesterday night thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it all. <laughs> Indeed. Awesome. So let's just get going then. I will frame up the scene for you again. So there is a, a group of people who have gathered around this um, sort of dais stage scaffolding thing that's set up in, uh, in the square. Um, this stage, I'm calling it for lack of a better word, it has frames on it which hang meats, cuts of meat, and some of those cuts of meats are arms and legs and other um, uh, other things that you would not want to eat unless you are a cannibal. And the butcher has come out. Uh, he's got his white butcher's apron, um, dingy pants, um, no shirt, <laughs> as best you can tell, a bow tie though, and, and and a cartoon pig mask, right? And the cartoon pig mask, the paint is very faded and kind of flecked with blood, right? And he's got he's got his big cleaver, and he's he's got the little sharpening stone, and he's kind of sharpening his cleaver while he sings his songs about um, uh, all the different cuts of of, of meat um, and why you might want to eat said cuts of meat. And I described the song last time as like a mirthful, jolly, merry song, but I've been thinking about it, and I think it's actually more of like an operatic thing, like a like a very like soaring operatic like verse that he sings, right? I don't have I don't have uh, 
I don't have a tenor's voice, so I'm not going to, I, I will, I will, I will, I will, I'm not going to spare you my singing, but I am going to warn you that I'm not good. But so he, he's, you know, he, he gets, he gets to the elves, he gets to the dwarves, he gets to the humans, and then he's got this sack and he slumps that sack onto the counter and he's got his sharpening stone. He's got his, his blade and he's like, halfling meat, halfling meat, very tasty, yum, yum treat. And he's like, shoo, 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 the sharpening stone the whole time. Right. Um, hide and seek, crawl and sneak. They'll never see you coming. And he's like, shoo, shoo, shoo. and then he reaches into the bag, pulls out a halfling, um, the halfling is like screaming, leg, single leg kicking, arms flailing. Um, he just like slumps that halfling, clothes and all, onto his cutting board and raises up the cleaver. I will tell you all that you, if you rescue the halfling, uh, you will, the halfling will be grateful and almost certainly be an ally of some sort if you do. But on the downside, if you interrupt this and you rescue the halfling, you're going to earn the ire of the butcher and possibly um, the town too. Well, maybe not the town's ire, but you will be on people's radar, right? You are not going to be able to travel um, unseen as much if you do if you do this. Okay. So, with all of that in mind, I will just ask each of you what you're thinking about seeing this halfling being stuck on the on the cutting board ready to be chopped up weary what do you think um i kind of have this idea that maybe uh since weary kind of grew up here for a little while when he was in the seminary that maybe he the butcher like doesn't know it but he already has the ire of the butcher because when he was a kid um i think when you were uh, bad in the in this in the seminary they would cast you out and when you were a kid they would they would say like don't come back until you're good and weary and then he, like he would have to wander the streets terrified and he'd always be hearing that song like the mm. butcher would be hunting for him mm. um so i think he, there's like you know in the tv show of this or the movie or whatever there's like a flashback of young weary wandering the streets and stuff and then as soon as the song hits uh the the his like actual ears it goes back to real time and and he's definitely thinking that he's not gonna let this halfling boy get killed because that's what he feared all along when he was a child as well indeed indeed archon what are you thinking this is no coincidence. This was all planned like this. The halfling plays an important role in our journey to this town. We need to get him from the hook because we need to talk to him. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I tried to find the easiest way to get to the halfling, which is through the mind of <laughs> its current owner and try to seek in, a, in the butcher's heart a solo. I have a move. Uh, did, did you have to touch the butcher? Or? Um, that's a separate move, yeah. Ah, okay. All right, awesome. Uh, and Geiska, what about you? Uh, Geiska is uh, going to start walking towards the butcher, mm -hmm. keeping an eye on his companions and yeah he's gonna try to save the halfling as well all right i'm gonna let archon's move fire off here so archon what move are we doing you're muted muted <laughs> I, i'm i was whispering <laughs> um, the move is called um the hearts sorrow and when i look into someone's heart in search of a secret i can roll plus wisdom Let's do it. And um, if I if I spend one focus, I have one question which is not on the list of uh, uh, original. Nice, nice, and nice. And then it becomes then it becomes a mind thing. I love it. Yeah, let's do that. Do you guys need to roll for your party room? Until then, I have a nine, which means I can ask one question. Think from the list. One second. 
yeah, one question. And I have this additional question from, I can find a secret pain from their heart. Oh, the secret can easily be used to gain leverage for Palais. Mm -hmm. so we don't use Palais, I think it's still, yeah, in the sense of it's a, it's a, a secret I can easily use in this situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if, if the circumstances of Parlay come up, we'll do Parlay, but I, as a general matter, yeah. Parlay is not a great move. Um, it, it doesn't, it's hard to set up fictionally, in my opinion. Um, so you're choosing that one? Now, what I don't get, I don't get greater context. And I don't don't get that I could new, have new it otherwise. You're going to get a vision of a woman, a um, a lovely woman, an older woman, wearing a simple a simple blue dress, looking out a window, writing in her journal, at a desk. It's a sunny day, um, and she seems, she's writing something, you can't quite tell what she's writing. It's not just, it's just out of your field of vision. But whatever it is, after she finishes, she closes the journal and she feels relieved, like she just got something off of her chest, right? And then you see, Entering your field of vision, you see a knife as if you're carrying the knife and you're approaching the woman, right? And the woman chastises you, tells you to put it down. Um, you shouldn't be playing with sharp objects like that. You're far too young to be playing with things like that. But you disregard her and you, you jam the knife into her stomach and spill her bowels out onto the floor. She collapses um, in a pool of blood and viscera, dead, dying. And you kneel down, drop the knife, not realizing what you've just done, and you begin sobbing. And your tears splash on her face as she takes her last breaths okay yes sure you can use yes totally use them, right? <laughs> from your mother against somebody now my next goal is to touch the butcher let's see if that works in all now well so we don't have a lot of time here like um you know he's raising the he's raising the cleaver getting ready to just like bring it down onto Onto the uh, on, on, onto this onto this halfling, um, who do we think is going to be able to act quickly here? Probably, I'm guessing weary, but. Mm -hmm. um, I like the idea that maybe he's wearing the mask because he doesn't. Uh, maybe they have a thing about concealing identities, but maybe I could like Spout Lore to know his identity from living here before, and then I could call that out, and that would make him stop. From shock. Yeah, yeah do a spot lore. See so how it goes. Is that int? Yes. Did I increase that yet? <laughs> Desperately hoping. Nope. <laughs> uh, six, of course. <laughs> um, maybe help would be helpful here. Pascal, what do you think? Or preparation. Or preparation. Yeah, good point. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll spend a prep and. Okay. Uh, it, what it looks like in fiction is maybe uh, young weary wandering uh, the streets and seeing like maybe sneaking into the to the butcher when he's like a young little fledgling thief and uh, seeing the butcher's face like lit by like fire when he's in his own place or something like that. Yeah, uh, the butcher's name is Morvo. Morvo. And he's considered, he's roundly considered crazy. Like, like even, wow. even the like most despicable person in Iangovida believes that the butcher, not necessarily Morvo, that the butcher is totally crazy. Morvo, however, the secret thing about Morvo um, is that he was actually uh, the son of a wealthy merchant 
um, he was not born to this particular life, right? But he's somehow got wrapped up in it. And he actually has like, he actually just does the butchering for fun. Uh, oh. he, he has all the money he could want. Okay, so I think Weary um, shouts out, um, Despicable Morvo, hold your, uh, what is he using, like a cleaver? He's got a cleaver, yeah. yeah hold your crazy cleaver. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm into this, and so the idea here is you just want to get him to stop, right? Like just to stop his. To yeah, stop like. What he's doing. Um, yeah, I, like I think maybe lots of the town people don't know who the butcher is. Like it's a performative mm -hmm. piece that he does, mm -hmm. and by calling him out, like he's losing that aspect. Yeah, that's good. You can even say like Morvo, son of whatever his dad's name is. We'll say yeah. Morvo, son of um, Morvane. Ooh. A name people would know, right? That's, or that's yeah. a name they would know. So I like that. Give me the five danger charisma. Okay. I think I actually have pretty good charisma. Yes, I do. A nine. Nine. Uh, aid might be great here, Archon, since you have some secret info. Psy blast him. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, so, well, so yeah. let's, let's, let's have it. I mean, like, we're not going to do the full duel of wits here, but just give me the, uh, give me the, uh, like, what do you say, Weary, to get him to stop? Like, what do you, how do you call him out? What do you do? Yeah, like, on screen, we see the cleaver, like, rise up into, like, the sunlight or whatever, right? Or mm -hmm. I, I guess it's really dark, but whatever. It's, it's dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, I call out in, like, a booming voice and name him. Mm -hmm. Morbo, son of Morvane, stop your bloody cleaver. Uh, and uh, now, Archon, you know, you have the information about, you know what Morvo, like Morvo's childhood was like, right, basically. I imitate the voice of his mother oh, and good. call him out. Nice, I love Put it. down the knife. That's very good. You're far too young to play with knife. <laughs> Not that it worked well last time, but <laughs> but maybe he wants a redemption. Go ahead and roll plus charisma. Ah, that's a six, but I don't know my charisma value because I have <laughs> never before used my charisma for anything. It's plus one, so I'm up on seven. Okay, that, that bumps you up to a ten then. <laughs> uh, it's going to work. Um, he will stop. Uh, you can see his, you can see the cleaver like wavering, trembling, you know, his hand as you say these words to him, as he looks at you, Archon especially, right? And um, at this point, you're close enough, Geiska, that the the halfling is there um, within arm's reach. You can reach up and grab the halfling if it came right down to it. The halfling is there, um, like, I think Morvo the butcher has his left hand on the halfling's ankle while he's like thinking about this and looking at Archon. Um, there's a moment here where maybe you can rescue the halfling. What would you do? Uh, I will grab the halfling then and try to make a run for it. <laughs> Give me a. Um, I'm gonna have it be dexterity, just because I think mm -hmm. you're kind of. It's more of a sneaky thing than a strength thing. All right. Uh, let me roll. Uh, we're rolling, we're using Shane's roller, right? You, yeah, you can, yeah. And then you can just, um, every time somebody rolls, if you guys want to see it, you have to just refresh the page. So. Hold up. Uh, I just don't know how this one is, <laughs> works, so. Uh, and it's plus zero, so submit. Oh, it's a four. Ah. <laughs> All right. Um... So you're trying to grab the halfling while, uh, while you know, while he's while he's being distracted, and let me look at my I want to look at my friends real quick. If you guys just give me a moment, Let's see if there's something I can push here that would be particularly delicious that has nothing to do with this scene. <laughs> Gotta find them though. It's my excuse to pull my notes up too. But go ahead and work an XP. Uh, uh, 
you, Kaiska, you reach to go for um, to go for the halfling, and to are you just gonna try to like wrench him away from from yeah. from more? Yeah, you do. Um, you manage to you manage to pull the halfling off. Okay, you're gonna be successful in that actually, and he goes tumbling to the ground. Um, and but you you yank him off with your left hand. Your right hand is still kind of like up on the cutting board, right? Mm -hmm. As the halfling goes tumbling down, and that snaps the butcher. That snaps his attention like immediately. He's like, "What?" And he just like brings the cleaver down and cleaves your hand off at the wrist. Oh just, my! Bah! And there's just a spray of blood. Geiska screams out in pain, falls down, blood spewing. How much damage, though? <laughs> no, no hit point damage. Just you have no hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> and you you fall down. You're kind of out of action though for for the time being. Um, Morvo grabs the hand, dripping blood. Right, Geiska's hand. And he begins singing the human song, right? I don't, I don't have the lyrics to the human song prepared, but he begins singing the human song. And right away, bidding begins for this warrior's hand, right? And people in the crowd are bidding like, you know, not, not huge amounts, you know, two coin, three coin, four coin, that kind of thing. Um, Weary and Archon, what do you guys do? What's your reaction as you see guys could go down? I think it's time to go. To leave? <laughs> <laughs> like with, but with the halfling and the the warrior. What about what about guys' hand? <laughs> yeah, we should get that back, maybe. Otherwise, somebody's going to be eating her head. Uh, hand. yeah. Well, well, well. I'm screaming in pain, but I'm. I'm walking away signifying, don't worry about the head. Uh, <laughs> there's more important things to save here. <laughs> there's more important things. <laughs> I mean, okay. I'm just crawling away. She's crawling. Uh, He's crawling away, blood like, you know, like just. Like with my uh, hand, with my stump, grabbing, right. clutching my stump, and then just walking away, making sure the halfling is coming with me. The hand is up to six coins at this point. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I, I wanna. Um, I wanna kill that guy. You want you wanna kill the butcher? Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, what's the butcher move? What do you do? Um, I think as soon as the bidding starts, we see like a, a flash to Weary's face, and he just has like rage. Um, and I think it insinuates that this has probably happened before like he's probably tried to stop Morvo before and it's probably never happened since he's back here trying to kill a half <laughs> <laughs> um but now he's older and now he's better so maybe um maybe he can do what um like he he thinks of he thinks that the people watching would stop it except the entertainment from this has like corrupted them like it's like a gladiatorial thing right like if it wasn't in the context of you watching this thing you would be outraged and, and rise up to stop it but because it's in the performative thing in a game it becomes like normalized and people participate in it so um well, also the people in this town are just fucked right I mean, yeah and just, <laughs> that too yeah. so what do you do um i think what i want to do is take his hand i want to i want to aim at his hand and shoot through it so it's like pinned to a beam or something like that mm, interesting hand for hand it's only fair yeah uh, you, <laughs> you have like a little trick shot move or whatever right uh no i don't i think that's maybe a ranger or i just didn't take it i'm not sure i, I for me you it's just you a have some kind of bonus move. thing though right like if you do oh for um... oh that's only for defy danger yeah um, yeah, my my special stuff is if he was like surprised or sense, uh, defenseless, um, and it's a melee weapon anyway. So for for the backstab thing, is that what you mean? No, you have one move here that says like when you defy danger on a twelve plus, you transcend the danger. You not only do what you oh, said yeah, to yeah. do, but the GM offer you a better outcome, true beauty, or a moment of grace. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're just trying to like pin his hand, that's a defy danger with Dex. So go for it. 
Yeah, well, I'm hoping that it hurts him as well. Roll. Oh, wow. I got a five. <laughs> I rolled two ones plus three. <laughs> I got the worst roll I could have possibly gotten. <laughs> Apparently, this butcher still has his hooks at me. I don't know. You fire off, or, or you, you pull up your bow and your arrow uh, in an attempt to shoot it. And a man, an older man, uh, wearing like a kind of like a rough gray robe and sandals and like kind of like gray, you know, uh, a mop of gray hair. It's your mentor order. He, he just like, <laughs> he just like is there in the crowd. I think he looks like, um, he looks like Stick on Daredevil, you know? Um, he looks like that guy, right? And um, and he just like sees you, and he's like, "What the hell are you doing?" And he like just he just like, bats your your bats your bow and arrow like like out of your hand, like you know, he's like he kind of bats it out of your hand and says, "I didn't teach you to make such a spectacle of yourself in a dangerous situation like this." And that's going on. Meanwhile, <laughs> again with Geiska, he's just like limping, crawling through the crowd with a stump. Um, Archon, I'm curious, like what you're what you're up to during all this. Like in in a few seconds only, I have like a stream of thoughts in my hand. I'm looking at the hand. I'm looking like how much value this hand must be. <laughs> oh, must... Yeah. And what do I have? What do I value? And what com what connects us? And should I value also something? he is valuing and so i take this silver amulet i have handmade for me mm. very special thing once created on one of the greatest adventures i've ever experienced i put it on the table as payment take the hand and try to get away before anybody's catching me yeah you can take that as payment and um and yeah it, it will, it will, it will, we'll call the scene right there um with with this halfling uh the, all of you um, guys, guys, maybe you'll band up, bandage up your, your stump for now. Maybe you might be able to find somebody to help you put the hand back on. That's a possibility. I don't know. Wait, you can put the hands back on after the... <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I mean, it, it, would, it would require some... I would say normally it would require some really, like, kind of almost, like, necromantic kind of, like, talent. And that's not the kind of thing you'd have easy access to normally. But you're an Eingeweide, so there's a good chance you might be able to find somebody who can help you out with that. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, if, if you were anywhere else, it would be a little trickier, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, so somebody. I'm going to go worry. refresh my coffee. Let's just take a quick bio break. I'm going to go refresh coffee. And uh, somebody think about the name of the of the inn or tavern where you guys are going to be staying. Um, uh, something particularly ghoulish sounding would be great. And we'll kind of pick up the scenes there. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, I, I posted my idea for, well, not for the tavern, that was Garrett, but for what to do with the stump. Oh, <laughs> a huge sword grafted onto your arm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a possibility. You still probably I'm, need some kind of help for that though, right? Yeah, I know. But, Unless you do a blacksmith. I don't know. You could make a case for blacksmith if you had the blacksmith move to where you could maybe I, do something I, like that. I, 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 was, I was, <laughs> like, I was a bit, uh, like, debating between blacksmith and the move that lets you speak to the sword. Mm, yeah. You kind of are already getting to speak to the sword, though, in a way. I mean, like, in you can way. speak to the sword, but not you don't get the move results, I guess, from that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, cool. Yeah, it was basically, okay, which one do I take next level? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I love this tavern name, Leichenschmaus, is that right? Perfect. Leichenschmaus, Corpse Delicatesse, and that's good. Yes, yeah, the... who wouldn't want to stay there? <laughs> yeah, the literal translation: it's the funeral feast. Oh, good. Mm, I like that. Smells like, like a delicatess. <laughs> like his corpse. <laughs> I'm gonna freeze for a minute. I'm gonna come on. Yeah. So it seems that my test on friendship failed. So I have the hand and. Geisker doesn't need it anymore. So what would I do with the hand if I replaced it with an amulet and put it around my neck? <laughs> that would be creepy. So, yeah. I, would just, I would just say, why do you bother getting the hand? We have yeah. to save people. We were going to save the halfling. <laughs> oh, yes. Seems I, I misunderstood. Like, I have an idea about what it could be called. Oh, but it's not really we, ghoulish, though. Oh, Garrett already gave us a pretty good name. If oh, you what hear. is it? Uh, he, he's uh, going with our sort of like German naming scheme here. He's he's recommended Leichenschmaus, uh, Leichenschmaus, mm -hmm. which means corpse delicatessen. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> that's pretty. Yeah, okay. What was yours? I, just out of curiosity. Uh, I I was just thinking hellfire and holy water. <laughs> 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 that's, that's pretty metal, which also fits. I would say that's where the motorbikes from yeah. <laughs> Eingemeide meet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Leichenschmaus. Um, so you guys are at this. You guys are at this inn and tavern. Um, I think it's actually surprisingly. Um, I think you expect it to be like all grim and ghoulish and dark, you know, because you know Eingemeide. But in fact, when you get in there, it's surprisingly, um, it's surprisingly elegant. There are, the long tables are covered with red silk cloths. Um, there's velvet furniture. There are candle chandeliers hanging above in the main sort of like dining tavern area. The only vaguely unsettling part of it is that, uh, the main room and is is lined with um, open face caskets that are standing up, and so there are like embalmed bodies, like kind of just leering out at you as you as you enjoy your drink and your and your food. Um, order will basically give you side eye weary, and then um, recommend you come see him later, but then otherwise leave you alone. The halfling. The halfling. His name is. Get my notes. The halfling's name is Davrick Stone's Throw. I'll type that in. in the first thing I'll use. Uh, his name is Davrick Stone's Throw, and you'll learn just from a quick conversation with him as you go to to the inn, which he recommends. By the way, you will learn that he is um, he is an agent for. A, a menagerie, uh, a menagerie in Eagle's Reach that displays strange and unusual creatures, and he had come to Eingeweide for the purpose of uh, purchasing a particularly, um, particularly rare, possibly unique creature that he believes is going to be on the auction block soon. That's why he was there. He got snatched by the butcher, and the rest is history. But he thanks you so much for for helping him, um, and yeah. Can I ask you a favor? 
to uh, Guy Scott and Blue Diver, yeah. Oh yeah, okay, sure. He's like, he's like, yes, yes, anything. I, I owe you. I, I have a life debt. I mean, you've you've done so much for me. Looking at your stump, pretty, <laughs> you know. Yes, like, I would like pointedly. payment for a draft graft. I need, and I show him the stump. <laughs> he says, I can do you one better. In fact, I can I can take you to someone here in Hangabara who can help you with that. Oh. And it's, let's just say he's a competitor of mine, but it's a friendly competition. Um, right. I'm sure he'd be willing to help you. And he kind of, he says, he gives you like a name and a location. Um, the name he gives you is Eror. Eror is a null necromancer. Oh, okay. He is also he's a null necromancer, and he actually also runs a blood sport event in town called Green Blood and Glory. Yeah, null side of hyenas. Um, he <laughs> he's he gives you the name. Uh, he t he says to say that you know that he sent you. Um, he warned you that Eror might ask for um, some sort of additional payment or some sort of additional like request from you, you know. Okay. Um, in order can to you cover? Same. Can you cover the base payment? He says, "I have a feeling he's not going to want money, but if he uh -huh. does, come back to me and I'll help you out." All right. Back uh, it. So yeah, so you're all there. You can all be drinking, doing whatever you wish. Yeah. I'm gonna go around the table and find out what you're doing. Where are we up to? Um, I think that Weary is like maybe sharpening his weapons at the table or something, <laughs> or a weapon like a longsword or something like that. And I think he's like pretty disturbed to be back in this place and still sort of like flaccid. Like he was hoping that he would be much more. Uh, able to exert his will in this place, but I think it's like being a helpless in... seminary kid again, all over again, right? Yeah, ex exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I think he's uh, feeling a little bit more distraught than usual. Also, I was thinking it would be kind of neat if uh, those bodies that were like staring at us, what if it, they were like also casks that had like aged? Yeah, that's good. Uh, I love it. Yeah, they have like taps them. on them. <laughs> yeah, and like you know, do you know how like um when they do um when they make scotch and stuff like that um some of it evaporates over time and they call it the angel's share maybe mm -hmm. they have like the um the face and all that like taped up so it can't get to the angels like it, it prevents it <laughs> nice <laughs> like because they're all assholes here so it's like <laughs> it's like booze fermented with like corpse fluids and and embalming fluid of, or, or maybe the booze is doing the embalming right like it's, yeah exactly it's, it's preserving yeah. the corpses that's gross uh, do you guys drink that davrick as usual it's delicious he says he says he says don't turn your nose up to it as long as you as long as you don't mind a little bit of you know if you don't mind the chewy bits that sometimes get into a swallowful um oh. it's, it's it's rather delicious and he takes a drink <laughs> yeah. i yeah, guess there's like... no other options here so i drink it with my left hand <laughs> <laughs> um it's perfectly it's like... fine it's not going to make you sick or anything and and it doesn't i i, I wouldn't say it tastes great but it um it's an unusual experience um archon when you drink this ale that has been uh that a body has been steeped in how do you how does it affect you well um the the, the risk i run into is uh, that i go into the memory spec from the person to whom that belonged and i i'm brooding over so many different things already that i might easily get drawn into that because like there's this thing with uh, the butcher and his memory from his childhood there is the thing that i have a hand in my hand which belongs to a friend or is it supposed to be a friend i don't know and i was sitting there at this table which is a coffin with a crystal ceiling so we couldn't look inside and there's a a, a, a weird creature, and then I wonder if this is coming from that creature. What I'm just drinking from this coffin, and 
Yeah, I'm, I would be ready to spend a focus to go into this corpse mm. memory. I have one focus left, but I think there's an opportunity re to regain focus. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, yeah, you can spend one. Uh, I'll just give you some. Uh, you can ask. Do you get to ask me questions or something? Like, how does this work? It's uh, like peer through the veil, so you can you can simply say what what uh, what comes up. Oh right, right, and if and if it's appropriate, a dr. But I'll just I'll just tell you some stuff. Yeah. <sighs> this person um, was a local of Angavida. This, uh, I don't know if it's a person, I think it's like an orc. And all it's hard to tell because the body is like kind of deteriorated, you know, over time. But the one thing you're going to learn is that this person was obsessed with some information that he got from a woman who lives in the well, in the town well. And he spent a lot of time speaking with this woman at the well who was down below, who lived down there. Um, and he, she, she whispered things to him that basically drove him crazy. And he eventually died of the stomach cancer like everyone, but he was obsessed with, with the information that she gave him, um, the, the precise nature of which is unclear. It's all interesting to me because a well, that means it's deep inside of Eingeweide. And deep inside of Eingeweide, I expect the spirit, that, uh, what the helicopter kind of name. Mm. So, I'm calling it, I'm calling the spirit um, Halikabacht. So. Halikabacht, yes, Halikabacht. So that is interesting. I try to memorize the how, what, which well it was. There are mm. several. So with that we can later go there. They will also tell my friend, my the other people with me. I mean, yeah, you'll have that information easy. Um, guys, go once you get your information. It's it's pretty. I think it's probably like at a certain point after enough drinking and brooding and everything, it's going to be getting you know it, it'll be nighttime, but still fairly early in the evening. Um, guys, go. What do you do at that point? Well, I wanna. Uh... Uh, have a conversation with Arkan before anything. Sure, go for it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sorry about uh, chastising you for over the hand. Uh, I remember I that pendant meant a lot to you, right? Uh, yes, but you also mean a lot to me. So it's it's equivalent. This hand. Uh, you, yes. Doesn't uh, seem you want it back. Well, I might need it for the <laughs> well, my uh, well, well, I might need it back for the grafting, but I'm not. But yeah, uh, I guess thank you for getting that back. I I know uh, that yeah, it 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 was. I appreciate what you did even though I didn't show it at the time. Seems you have a better plan with you and especially with your body. What is it, what is it up with you that you don't care about your own hand? I can figure out how to work with my left hand for combat, or I can just grab and something. Don't tell me nonsense! There's more behind this. You seem to be nearly happy that you lost your hand. Well, I, I, not. I just want to protect people. I don't want to necessarily fight. <laughs> and yeah, losing my arm. I, I don't mind losing my arm if, if it was if it meant protecting someone like uh, Dar Daverick. And, and Daverick says, and I thank you, I thank you lustily as he like drinks a bit of like um, chunky chunky ale. <laughs> yeah. sure. Okay, I think there's something more you want to tell me. 
but we keep that for the night. All right. And my hand is moving slowly in the direction of your left hand, the other hand, the one hand which is left. Yes, <clears throat> the, the one that Ready is left. Touch. <laughs> yes, <laughs> ready to touch your hand. But I will do so tonight, so I will join you in your dreams. All right. All right. All right. All right. And awesome. I, and I guess I'm gonna go. Uh, when do we rest? Actually, <laughs> this. Uh, is yeah, you guys. If you, you guys, this can count as downtime. If you guys want to level, that's fine. Well, it's not just level, it's healing. <laughs> oh, uh, well, if you guys want to take the night off, yeah, you can go back up. Especially healing and in, especially, yeah, you can, you can go back up to max, so. Yeah, I have a, I have a task to do while they're sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. Well, you can, you can have the next scene then, if you want to. So what, what do you do? Yeah, uh, we have a busy night on. Yeah. yeah, I think when you guys are, like, going to the room, Weary says that he will meet you later because he has a unique task, only he has to do and uh, it can only be done in the cover of darkness. And I think like for the audience, the sh foreshadowing of that was him uh, sharpening his blades and stuff, right? Yeah. Because he's going to go kill the butcher. What? <laughs> <laughs> Hunting the butcher. Yeah. Because uh... I think in his mind, he needs to like, he looked like impotent to his master, right? So I think to mm. regain... Um, some of that favor from stick <laughs> but also uh like i think he needs to also get his mind in a headspace of killing somebody in order to like recoup the mental defenses that has been like sort of slowly eroded from being friendly with everybody else and stuff like that so i think um, in his mind doing something terrible will rekindle that mental fortitude for some reason or maybe it's just an excuse to go kill the <laughs> it could be that too right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i'm okay with either yeah so I, i've yeah, i've okay. told you a lie well so what you're <laughs> yeah oh yeah so so what do you, do you what do you tell the group like as you yeah like i think he he's like uh, i need have some business or some trade to conduct and it can only be done at night um, nice, nice, nice. Uh, he'll, he'll, and so how does the flag work? Do they have to just believe it or do they have to like not believe it but still let you go? I, it just says believe a lie I've told you. Uh, okay, all right, all right. Well, I believe everything what Weary is telling you. <laughs> <laughs> that's very interesting. <laughs> no, because it's part of his identity immediately. He, there's nothing real behind it anyway. Ah. <laughs> I'm... Spoken news, baby. How are you feeling, Geiska? Weary, I'm a bit weary. Looks pissed, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit weary myself <laughs> about uh, this thing going on. So, but so I just say, uh, just call, just make sure you don't get yourself killed. Doing because, your business in town. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it's it's more like. I know I can't stop him right now because I I only have one arm first of all and it's <laughs> <laughs> and second of all I'm still injured from the day before. Oh, yeah. it'd be from kind fighting of fighting the Griffin and whatever else happened. Yeah, yeah. It'd be so... kind of a neat scene if like guys goes to like stop Weary with the hand that is missing and like yes. misses his shoulder <laughs> <laughs> and then just says fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> or or he's just too quick, right, and leaves. <laughs> I like the one where it's like he tries to he tries to say something with this and then he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is not also, the place to trust your gut feeling. Okay, well, so Weary, what, what might you know about how to find um, or how might you know like to find the butcher? Well, with the, the flashback that we set up before is when he was a kid, he had found the butcher and went into his home already. So I think he's uh, thinking maybe he just still lives at that place. Uh, okay, okay. And he's okay, been okay. maybe he's been sitting on that knowledge the whole time because he knew at some point that he did want to do away with the butcher when he was older and more capable. So the butcher, uh, Morvo, he does live in a, a fairly nice house um, in in Eingavita, one of the nicer houses. This is because he does come from money. He's not actually he doesn't need to do butcher trade, right? And it's not well kept. Um, 
you can see lanterns lit in the windows. The yard is, um, the grass is all browned and everything is just kind of like in disarray. Um, the iron gate is even kind of swinging open. It's not even closed, doesn't even close properly. What do you do? Ooh, I'm getting like a sleepy hollow vibe. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, not, it's that's close, I suppose. Yeah. Um, I think that he is going to like survey the place for a point of weakness to mm. get at the butcher unawares. Um, yeah. Yeah, we so, are. Yeah, do discern realities. So it goes. Discern realities, which is uh, wisdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seven. <laughs> <Just> okay. <laughs> you get one question. What do you want to know? Um, I think maybe the closest thing would be what here is useful or valuable. Maybe let me let me see just to make sure. Um, I don't know. Maybe do you think what is about to happen would be? better for the question that I want to know so that like if, you, if you're just looking for a way in it? if you're just looking for a way in probably like what should I be look out for or okay sure then that um so I think if I assume you don't want to just like go to the front door no yeah I want it to be something really cool and cinematic <laughs> <laughs> so assuming you don't want to just go to the front door I think it's like a little two it's like a two-story house kind of nice um I think the better way in is probably going to be um, as you're kind of like looking around and kind of checking the place out, there's actually like a, um, there's like a bin, like a wooden bin that contains, um, from the outside of the house, it contains, if you kind of flip it open, um, like different types of basically like just like detritus, right? Like it gets like kind of just like a waste bin or something is a little unclear um you know just garbage and bits of bone and discarded fleshy things and all that kind of stuff um that would be a great like sneak attack spot right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay oh yeah also a thing i was wondering about is when garrett did call out to the butcher uh, in the first scene in the mother's voice, did that seem to like affect him at all? It got his attention, yeah. Huh. Cause I'm thinking, what if I did my disguise to look like his mom to like freak him out when I kill him? <laughs> and like, yeah. and, like reverse intense. the the thing, like maybe I'll kill him with a knife, like the way yeah. that he killed his mom, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. One thing you could learn though, um, is he's actually not home right now. Uh, oh man. <laughs> you, you don't hear him. Um, he's you, you, the lanterns are lit, but he's not around. He's probably out in town, skulking around at night, grabbing people. Oh, okay. Uh, interesting. Maybe what I'll do then is um, make a distraction for him to come here, and I'll do that by um, lighting his house ablaze. <laughs> awesome <laughs> okay good 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 um well okay so we have i i i i i'm super interested in this scene but i i want to make sure that if if archon and geiska are just sleeping tonight and resting i don't want it, i don't want to like basically just have to have this big long extended scene where they're not doing anything <laughs> so um, yeah for sure so we I, have to figure out how to handle that yeah. i think archon we... wanted to explore dreams <laughs> so we'll have our scene of our own, I guess. <laughs> you have to explore dreams. Just, I, I want to, to go on a little dream journey uh, uh, with guys. That doesn't have to be a long scene either. But um, I, I, that's hitting on the flag that um, guys guys wants us to tell about things beyond the mission. And, and me learning about friendship. But that could also can be a very uh, short scene. Uh, I'll, well, we can do it now. It's fine. Yeah. So set it up. Where are we at? What, what's going on? Um, because we are in Eingeweide and this place is a, has, an, has a very evil atmosphere, it has to happen all interpreted as if it is in Eingeweide. So no matter where we are and what we do, 
it is an eingeweide. It's just a reinterpretation of everything. Mm -hmm. So and it is references this. This city is not leaving us alone, even if we sleep. Mm -hmm. I like that. And so you're going to. How are you going to enter Kaiska's dreams? Um, I'm touching him, mm -hmm. and um, I have his other hand on my chest mm. and holding it tight mm. to my chest because this is where we wear it from now on to eternity mm. even taking it with me through the black gate one day yeah, I like and then that. bringing it back yes but um yeah and so we lie on the floor because we need hard hard ground below us and um then we go on the journey like body that. to body yeah, it's good. Here's what we're going to do. I like this a lot. Um, I Give me a moment to think about this. Um, I think because of your powers, you can probably, I think you can probably like guide you and Geiska's consciousness in a sort of like astral projection kind of way, right? Like maybe, maybe it's a dream. Maybe it's not. Maybe you guys are just like kind of roaming around Eingavida as consciousnesses, right? Um, it's an interesting thing. I think I'm going to count this as astral travel. I have I have moves that I can hit with that in my in my archive. Here's what here's the way this is going to start. you both eventually you're just laying there for a while guys <laughs> and it's a little unclear if like anything is actually going to happen right and archon keeps reassuring you like just you know it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine like no worries no worries and eventually you're just getting bored and you just like fall asleep and archon i think maybe you do too you both just fall asleep in your room at the in the name of which I've already. I want to remind you that the key has three holes on me. I know. Oh yeah, I know that. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, just letting you know in case yeah. you want to throw that in at some point. Oh no, I've got, I've got it. Um, let's see here. What was the name of the, the end? I've already forgotten. Uh, Leichenschmaus. Leichenschmaus, that's right. So you're in your room in the Leichenschmaus, asleep. But then you're suddenly not. You're both standing shoulder to shoulder, looking at the door to your room. You're inside the room, both standing shoulder to shoulder, looking at the door. And there is a message scrawled on the door. And the message scrawled on the door says, whatever you do, don't turn around. Oh. What do you both do? Don't turn around. Go through this door. I guess I'll... Show me. I guess I'll go through the door as well. You go, you're making your way. Um, you're in the Lashish Mouse, but it's a little like fuzzy, like on the periphery of your vision. It, it's just a little fuzzy. You have like an almost like pinhole vision. You can only kind of see in front of you, right? and you're making your way down the hall, down the steps. Everything as you expect it to be, it all appears as you expect it to, to, to appear. Um, there are even um, people in the dining area still having a drink. They don't seem to notice you. What do you do? Keep going. I, I ask you, guys, go. Who are these people for you? Look closer. They are people from your past. Reality, dream, your memories, everything is intermingling here. 
they mean something to you. Look closer, understand, and then we go on the street. But beware, nothing good is waiting there for us. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Yeah. I will look at the people. Then I will do as Arkan asked. And it, and do I describe the people? Or well, what? I, the people, uh, they may be people from your past, um, but they could just be people that you saw in passing, right? You may not have like an immediate familiarity with these people. Mm -hmm. uh, they could be people who were down in the, in the bar earlier, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but give me a discern realities. Let's see what you might know. All right. Let me make sure my discern realities, my wisdom is zero, I mean. Uh, okay, here we go, slash R, roll, ah, four. Four. You are roaming around the dining hall. Again, no one really like seems to notice you. And maybe some of the people look familiar. As Archon speaks these words, it maybe has like a suggestive power on you that makes you think, oh yeah, that looks like the person who, you, you know, the blacksmith in that one town or whatever, right? Whether it's true or not, who knows? But you're, you're making those connections in your mind yeah. because of Archon's suggestions, right? Yeah. One man stands up, mm -hmm. who you definitely don't recognize. And he is a warrior. He is wearing like armor that's been kind of like um, rubbed with blue tincture, you know, mm -hmm. and and he has kind of a red cape, and he looks like a pretty skilled guy. He's got a really nice sword. His armor's in good shape, um, but just just dented and dinged enough to let you know he's seen combat, right? Mm -hmm. uh, shock of like sort of dusty dusty blonde hair, and he stands up and turns and looks directly at you, Gaiska, and he says, and he looks at you and he says, that's a really nice sword you have there. All right. Uh, yes, what about it? He says, well, it's just, I can, I know you, 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 you seem very formidable, a sword like that. And well, <laughs> he looks at your stump. It seems you've seen some action. Yes, <laughs> uh, that is true. He says, maybe not as formidable as I thought, <laughs> looking at your stump. That wasn't, that was saving someone, just uh, so you know. Indeed. And my sword was not in use at that point. He says, indeed, indeed. He says, um, can I hold it? The sword or the stump? <laughs> the sword. <laughs> he says, your sword, yes. <laughs> No. I'm gonna spend one of my hold. Uh, okay, of the key. The, the, yeah, the horde, the, the the sword, the light, the first light wants you to let this person hold it. Okay. And there's Archon behind the... you who tries to stop you. Don't talk. Don't talk to them. Don't give them anything. But he's muted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I will. I will do as the key says and get one XP. Yeah, you get an XP. He takes the sword and he's kind of, you know, he's like evaluating it. He's, he's holding his hands. Again, nobody else in the room seems to notice any of this, okay? It's just the three of you. And you're not even sure if he sees Archon or not. That's unclear. Um, he's, he's holding the sword. Uh, does it have a faint glow, like of the first light, or just at nighttime or something? Uh, it has a glow, a okay. faint glow, uh, especially now in the astral projection. Mm -hmm. Most like I would think that the astral projection makes it glow. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna cut away from that scene. Weary, back in the real world, um, your plan is to burn down the butcher's house to get him to come back. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe he has like a like a shack where he has all his tools or something like that, and it's adjacent to the house. So if I light it ablaze, he'll be like, "Oh shit, I need to come back and put out the flames before it spreads to my house proper," kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. And then my trap will be. Uh, laid within that area. Yeah, I like it. That's good. Give me a uh, let's do a, let's do a little on the fly custom move here. Give me a wisdom roll. Ten plus, he comes back. Seven to nine, he comes back, but you don't have to jump on him uh, on a miss. Not good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, it's a miss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, no, I'll, I'll spend a preparation, my last okay. preparation, because right. I, I really want this to happen. <laughs> <laughs> so it becomes a seven. Okay, sounds good. Um, so he, describe how do you get the house? How do you light it up? What does it look like? Um, yeah, so I think I go to his like shack, which I imagine has like hanging tools everywhere and they're all bloody and stuff like that. Um, and I want my plan is to like set it ablaze and in such a way that it would cause a lot of fear to him when he comes in because I'd be like looking really cool in the center of this blaze and like <laughs> wanting to mess him up basically. So you're going to fight him in the middle of the blaze. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a terrible idea. but I'm It's always it. cinematic priority. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, let's, let's, let's keep going. Uh, so you're setting the house on fire. I love that. I'm going to cut back to the other group. He's considering the sword, holding it in his hands. He he looks at you. He says, "Ah, my name is Kelvane, by the way." And he like goes to shake your hand. I'll type that for you. Uh, shake my hand with what? Our hand? Oh, does he extend the? <laughs> he, he, he will shake your good hand, right? Yes, um, I was about to say. <laughs> he says, "He says uh, the name's Kelvane," and he. Um, he, he kind of like, you know, he's got the sword. He gives the sword back to you. Yeah. And he says, have you ever thought about taking that thing to, to green blood and glory? Mm. Green blood and glory is the blood sport venue. For what? Green blood and glory. Um, <laughs> for the, you go there, you, you, you engage in combat, sometimes with other well-armed folks like myself, sometimes with beasts and other horrors that Eero has procure, procured. I think you would do very well there. I'd like to see you there, in fact. That's what I'm here in town for. Uh, unfortunately, I am not for blood. I am not necessarily interested. Mm. Well, if you change your mind, and he, uh, he just kind of like bids you adieu and walks away. Yeah. Out the out the out of the inn completely. All right. What do you I do? guess move forward out the door as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna turn around, but I'm gonna say, Arkan, you still here? I am still here. Don't talk to anybody. Don't interact with them. Uh, isn't that this the place? Um, we are not supposed to be in this realm, in this world. We why are, just are we visitors. here in the first place? To be, I mean, then why are we here in the first place? To observe, to understand, to learn. Okay. Move on, but be careful. From now on. This becomes deadly and beyond what you understand about leaving the world. All right. Universe. Move forward. Indeed, indeed. Weary, you've started your fire. And you hear singing an operatic cheerful operatic song that the butcher sings um, he begins singing a song about about carcosins about carcosin meat and how it's a wonderful thickener for stews and also causes you to have very strange yellow dreams and 
he's finishing the song as he kind of like, as you see him in silhouette, like standing by the front door, you see him in silhouette, the fire there, just, just there looking, you know, like in menacing, he's got his big cleaver. What do you do? Um, so I, I don't have the jump on him, right? But no, no, yeah. yeah. Um, you can't be surprised, but so even if you got the miss, it, it wouldn't have been as bad for you. But. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I say your your deadly dissipations are at an end, Butcher. And he kind of like steps forward into the you know into the light of the fire around you know, and you see that like that cartoonish pig mask, um, and he just he just like you know, kind of turns, you know, as if to consider you, although you can't really see what he's doing because he's got the pig mask on, right? Oh. And he says, <clears throat> he says, this is not the first time you've burned down my house. This is not the first time we have met. It always ends the same, I fear. <clears throat> but I'm getting pretty good at this point. And he kind of like raises up the cleaver and like hunkers down like in a football stance and just charges at you. Oh. What do you do? Um, I, I want to do the samurai run at him <laughs> with, like, okay. with my sword. <laughs> nice. Just going for straight hack and slash? Yeah, I think so. All right. Sounds good. Let me get his stats. Hold on. Okay. I'm, and I'm going to use my um, dueling rapier. Which is one piercing, precise, uh, close. Yes. All right. Give me a hack and slash. Let's see how it goes. Okay. So it, because of the rapier, it's dex? It's dex, right? if you have precise, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I got a five. I rolled two ones uh, plus three again. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's like invincible. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you run up to him. Um, he, uh, you like run, you're doing a little samurai run, right? And he's like hunkered down. His is more of like a, you know, kind of a, a lumbering sort of thing. Um, and you go to like take your swing and he just like, he just like gets up and like with a great like bout of strength, just like grabs you by your neck, just like grabs you hard by your neck and lifts you up and just like whoosh, slams you down into the into the the concrete mar the marble of his floor just and there's just a nasty loud crunch uh, he does d10 plus 5 this is 13 bad bad <laughs> I roll good <laughs> I roll really Aww. well now all right how many hit points are you down to uh, if I was I at full, I don't know. For some reason, I have fifteen out of twenty-one written. You can we can say you're at full. It's fine. <laughs> so, uh, so I have, uh, I have two armor. Does that work? Uh, yeah, armor counts. Yeah. Okay, so I have ten hit points left. All right. Um, he slams you down, and then he raises up the cleaver to like <laughs> take off a piece of you. <laughs> what do you do? Um. I think, okay, I'm going to try to be cool, which usually means I'll fail a roll, so <laughs> we'll see. Um, I think if the roll goes well, I've already planned this out. <laughs> so I, it was like I was counting on him getting close to me so I could envenom, envenom him with some, uh, some stuff. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. I think this might be a nice time to have our dreamers... Maybe not show up, but at least be aware of what's going on. Mm. Our dreamers. You... Everything is very, like, fuzzy. Like I mentioned before, very fuzzy on your, on your peripheral vision. Um, but you do see down the lane, down the way, you see a fire, a fire raging. Like, that's visible to you. What do you do? I rush towards only, the fire. Yes, it's not only visible. We can also hear it as if we stand directly next to it. I think so. Because this fire will change this place forever. This is the starting point of a slide downwards, and exactly the same way we slide towards 
the fire as if it goes deep down. Right. You run to the fire. When you guys get to the fire, you um, you see Weary. Uh, he's got a f there's a fuzziness to him. You can tell it's him, but he's he's got like you, you can tell he's definitely like. I don't know, like you're not, you can tell you're not quite on the same plane of existence as he is, right? Mm -hmm. um, as you rush up to the fire, uh, the thing he's, the thing that's got him <laughs> in his clutches, there is a, a massive red skinned, bloated uh, demon with thick, curling black horns. Um, and the demon has a big cleaver in its hand and it's got, it's holding Weary down. And it's and like it's got big like you know jowls and just like hissing disgusting fluids you know dribbling out. Um, you have to wonder what kind of trouble where he got himself into just now. Kaiska, what do you do? Uh, I'm going to. Uh, I think I'm going to. <laughs> use my magic to my magic sword to peel back the veil so yeah. we are not, so be, so we can all be in the same plane of existence oh, i like that that's good that's good i like that yes uh yeah cast that spell see how it goes all right so last seven uh what are the choices you have to make on seven i have to see and it's uh seventy nine, but just to I am going to pick the unforeseen side effects and my draw unwanted attention. Good, I like that. And uh, it's not gonna last long. Ah, okay. Let's uh, take a quick break. We'll come back. Okay. okay.
<laughs> yeah, I see the note. You guys are rolling a lot of misses. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Shane's, like, Shane's die roller is ruthless. <laughs> well, I'm just using the hangouts. Oh, hangouts. Uh, yeah, hangouts yeah. is also ruthless, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have a sweet idea though. So. <laughs> okay, so let me let me set up the scene for you. Um, so you you cast your spell using the, the power of the sword to sort of peel away the the separation between you all and and um, and weary right now and this demon. And here's what it looks like. As this, I'm going to take over the fiction of Jet Mind there. You, you take the sword out, and the light just basically, the light of the sword just basically like, um, like just carves away like the artifice around this burning house, right? There's still fire all around, but instead you're in the middle of this like, this like blasted red and black like pit almost, right? At a big like a crater right that you're in the middle of and Excuse hanging me. up all, yeah, Sorry. Uh, never mind no, never mind I... and, and hanging up all around the pit above you there are long chains with hooks and stuck on these hooks are are naked people uh, hung up like sides of meat um crying in pain uh quivering um desperately like looking at you like, 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 please, like, put me out of my misery. And there's just dozens and dozens of them hanging all around, almost like a curtain that you have to wade through in the pit. And in the middle of the pit, you see this fat red demon with black horns and a big fucking, it's like not just a, it's not just a cleaver. It's like a, it's a cleaver, but huge, right? Like Dark Souls huge, right? We're talking like a big Dark Souls level, like, creature here and oh this became diablo diablo with basically right. yeah yeah okay and weary is just there like on his back um weary you're you're now suddenly aware of all of the reality that's going on here weary mm -hmm. i want to know what uh Arkham, what do you do you're aware of this too i'm aware of this too but i'm still on the on this other level, which means, which is not bad for me, because actually my powers are even more important here and can interact with reality, so I don't need to switch realities and go back to normal reality. Um, the astral plane is just fine. Um, what I would like to do is I would like to look into everybody's heart's sorrow. Here. I have this move, <laughs> but I think from the astral plane, I can poke into all of them. <laughs> Everyone's heart sorrow. Good. I'm into that. Yes. I, I, I don't care what I will poke into, but it could cause collateral damage by doing so, especially by the people hanging there on the on the hooks and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds really dangerous to me. Um, it is. I want to defy danger of wisdom just to get this off. Today is the day. Four plus two is six. <laughs> mark an XP. Or do you I want to use preparation? Please. I could use preparation, but I haven't prepared for the astral plane, unfortunately. I wasn't <laughs> expecting to travel in Eingeweide in, on the astral plane. <laughs> no, quite the opposite. Yes. No, six is good. Archon, you ah! are you are trying to you, you're you're trying to expand your consciousness looking into what's going on here, you hear someone behind you say, help me, oh my God, please help me, quick. Not somebody hanging on a hook like someone else, right? Oh. Do, you, do you turn and look? I, I, I can't resist. I, I told Geiska the whole time, don't <laughs> look back. Don't look back. Don't interact with anything here. And I do so. You turn around. Um, we'll get to you in a minute. Archon just blinks away. You don't know where he's at. You, you just know he's no longer by your side, Geiska. Geiska, what do you do? Moving through this curtain of like anguished bodies hanging on chains and hooks. And I get flashbacks that, but Archon's not here, so he. And so I'm not gonna explain what the flashbacks are, but I do get flashbacks. So I grab my sword with my left hand and going. I'm going to charge the demon. 
Nice. Um, good. You're charged with the demon. It'll take you a moment to get there. Yeah. Meanwhile, Weary, what are you doing? Um, I wanted to have, if it's possible, envenomed. It, my idea was to have envenomed my my sword because it's touch. So even though I didn't like hurt him, uh, maybe I just scratched him and got the 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 venom that I wanted was the one that causes more damage. You take you roll it twice and take the higher damage. Yeah, and then that. I used the ring of fire control to pour all of the fire of the building into a column and burn him alive. That's inert, right? I don't think it's working anymore. What what the fire? Yeah, the, the ring. The, the I ring? think the ring went inert, didn't it? No, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. As a as a result of a fail, I made it inert. I remember that. No. <laughs> <laughs> really, I don't remember. I do. That. Oh, yeah, I distinctly remember that. Um, okay. And I remember it because I remember thinking, um, well, I should probably just, I, it, it would be like rolling the die of fate and getting a one. But I was like, well, it's a hard move. I'll just say it's you know no, it's no longer any good. Oh, okay. Uh, you may have, you may just now be discovering that. <laughs> <In character>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, but the burning structure is no longer around. You're like in a different plane of existence. Like you're just in a crater with a bunch of like chained bodies hanging up, and uh, okay. there's still fire. Like that's still in your vision. That's just because you're like in a hell space, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, the, the poison, uh, I think the poison will have a reduced effect on a demon. Uh, what does it normally do? It, it, you roll twice and you take the higher damage. Oh, okay. Um, I'm just going to say that the poison does an extra point of damage on the demon. Okay. And then I think like where he looks at the, the demon and is sort of like vindicated. I think when he was a kid, he always thought that the butcher was this kind of demon anyway, but yeah, so now it's sort of like that realization pours over him. And then I think he, he'll just straight up try to impale uh, the beast with his sword. Go for it, hack and slash. Let's see what happens. Apparently plus threes don't even matter today, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got 11, so so that's good. You can go and roll your damage on him. And then to D8. But an eight, <laughs> so nice. plus one is nine, I guess. Uh, cool. Yeah, that that is that's a good hit. Uh, Want to describe it? Um, I think Weary kind of smiles as he sees like um like a shot of the camera with the um like sliver of damage or whatever he did before with the venom soaking in, mm -hmm. and then he sort of like you know smiles, turns on his. Uh, back and then sort of reverses his blade up and uh, into the the creature's side. Nice, nice. Um, we're gonna cut to you in a minute, Geiska. But basically, Geiska, because the spell is not gonna last long, you just have like um, basically if you don't take the demon out like right now, that's then like something. The circumstance is gonna change. So, but let's go to Archon for a minute. Archon, you turn. And you find yourself floating in a sort of vast silvery void. There is, it's like you're like just floating in air. Um, up, down, to the left, all around. You see little, little islands archipelagos of floating terrain in the distance and if you and you could will yourself over to those um, as you wish as needed and you see that you have a thin silvery cord connecting from your chest out into infinite space it's like a tether right but that's none of that. that's all very interesting. But the thing you need to be worried about is what's rising up out of the silvery void at you. And I have a picture. It's going to take me just a moment to pull it up though. I do a thing to clip a picture. Um. But nothing should be here. It should be. 
right? Give me one moment. We have a board, don't we? A picture board. I don't feel right. It's here. It's coming. Is it below? I can't really see. There's no up and down and left and I can't even say if my I myself am down. Everything which feels real is my stomach. Try to focus on my stomach because I know it has. If you look at the picture more, you will see uh, a little snip. This is okay. from the first edition Manual of the Plains D and D book. You will see you kind of floating a little bit like that character in the foreground, and you'll see this titanic clawed beast that looks very similar to that. Big, huge maw, big single eye in the middle. Fun mm -hmm. fact, uh, the demon creatures in the video game Doom were inspired by this monster on this cover. Um, you see this thing, it has, a, it has like a sort of, like a sluggish lower body, like a sort of serpentine lower body. And you see it just like rising up and it's got these big, huge claws. And to your right, you see a bit of floating terrain that looks like your room at the inn. Um, you can you can see your body, in fact, like laying on the floor. Um, if only you could reach it uh, before this creature gets to you. What do you do? I have to reach it, but I shall not panic. Whatever is coming after me shall not cause panic, because panic will draw me further down and towards that creature. So with a grim look on my face, I swim, I fly, I, I dig closer to my body, try to reach it before this thing reaches me and gets a touch of me. Roll plus wisdom. Um, on a 10 plus, you get away fine. On a seven to nine, you get away fine, but you may sustain a certain amount of psychic damage because he's gonna do some, because of what will happen in the fiction. On a miss, the creature might sever your silver cord, stranding you in the astral plane forever. It's a five I rolled, but I have wisdom too. So it's ah, a seven. Okay. <laughs> You're going to escape. As you're escaping, you, the creature is using its massive claws to snap at your silver cord to try to sever it basically right and every time he like whoosh, snaps at your cord you feel this like this pain this shudder this wave of almost like insanity that like rolls over you right um but you but you're getting there you're getting there and you eventually like get to your body and you snap out uh, like you, you snap up and you look and you see, you know, Geiska is still, he's still there laying there on the, on the floor and you're, you're, you're not fine. We'll talk about how that affected you in a minute, but you're escaped. So let's cut away. Geiska, you don't have long here before the veil will, will be dropped back over your, your face. <laughs> so, um, you're rushing forward. The demon, this the demon sword is big enough to hit you both in one strike if it wanted to. So just know that. Um, getting close enough to the demon is going to be the basic problem for you right now. So describe how you would just get close to him for a blow. That's that's step number one. So what's the difficulty that makes it so that it's hard to get it close to him? He's got a big, huge reach on you. The blade and his arm is very long, so you have to kind of get underneath it. All right, so basically I roll, uh, so once I, once I get into his reach, uh, okay, I'll do what Fraser said, jump on his blade and run up and then stab <laughs> him with my sword. That makes it a defined injured dexterity, go for it. <laughs> oh my God, I'm gonna fail this. <laughs> oh wait, oh, a nine, okay. 
Okay, uh, you'll be trading blows. So he does a D10 I plus will. five. Or no, actually no. You, uh, this is defy danger, isn't it? Um, you're going to okay. get close to him, but maybe not in the circumstance, not in the way you wanted. <laughs> so okay. we'll talk about that. Um, can I help on the roll on the defiant danger? Would that? Uh, what was your roll? What was your final result? Nine. Oh yeah, sure. How would you help with yeah. you? Um, maybe as a, like just by splitting its attention. So like maybe I twist my sword and it's gut and I say like these are for the urchins that you prey upon. You know. <laughs> nice. Um, that's that's good. Uh, I think it's just a defy danger. I don't know. Um, intelligence maybe. For quick thinking. Seven. <laughs> okay, nice. Uh, that bumps you up to a 10, so you're good to go there. So guys, you're now, so describe how you get close enough to strike to do your blow. What does it look like? Uh, so when Weary distracts him, uh, I I take the opportunity to run up. Like, how big is this demon? Because I'm imagining running up his arm and then going yeah, he's the probably back. About, yeah, he's probably like about two stories high, at least. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I run up the the arm and then and then attack with my cleaver. I love it. Uh, hack and slash. Stabbing him. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so... Let's go. Eight. Uh, great, so you're going to trade blows. Uh, go ahead and do your damage on him. I want to see what that looks like first. Okay, it is two piercing. Mm -hmm. mm, it's just one d10. Ten! Nice, that's enough. Um, he does d10 plus five on you, so go ahead and roll that. All right. Um, and that's 14 damage total. <laughs> Uh, I rolled a nine. <laughs> well, so you're going to kill him. Uh, and he's going to hurt you as well. What does that look like? Describe the scene for me. All right. So I basically draw uh, my, I, well, with one hand, I stab him in the skull with my sword. But he's going, he's flailing around. And I, and after that, I just get flung like somewhere. Mm, nice, nice. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and that's all going on. Uh, he kind of lets out like a bellow, you know, as you like, as you take him out, right? Um, yeah. And you, yeah, he kind of slings you off, and that's all going on. Guys, go. You wake up. Yeah. In right next to right next to Archon, right yeah. in the in the hotel room, um, a little singed, a little bloody, a little uh, a little a little anxious. <laughs> Weary, you wake up, um, or you don't wake up, you just are, <laughs> and you're back in the burning house, and the butcher is laying there dead in front of you. Um, this all happened very quickly, so you haven't really had time to process what just took place, but what you do have time to notice is that you hear a crack, and there is a huge burning beam that's basically coming down on you as the house collapses, what do you do? Um, geez, I'm torn between just wanting to get out of the way and using like his body to block it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think it makes way more sense to just uh, like exit uh, the, this place. Do a defined injured dexterity. Oh, shoot, I put the wrong thing. 14. Whoa, so evasion too. So it's oh, like yeah. a, a, a really a, good shit. A moment of beauty. You, I'll, I'll give you the full, give, have your glorious moment, however you wish. Um, I think as the beam is falling, um, time like goes by slowly because it's Michael Bay movie when I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like he, there's like a lingering uh, look from Weary to the, the creature he's just killed. And he, um, jumps up, and as the beam is falling, he uses that as like a leverage to jump off of and, uh, and kind of do like a, which we call it, like a flying escape out the, the window kind of thing. Mm, nice. Or not the window, but uh, the, the main door as the house, like, or the, the shack collapses on the, on the butcher's body. Nice, 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 good. Um, and, you, and you tumble out, you roll out, and 
you roll out right at you know the gate of his house right right by the outer wall and your mentor order is there like standing there like he was watching all this take place and he says good that only took you 20 years and about 30 tries to get done <laughs> and he picks you up um and he says you had a very interesting night you couldn't have told me that it was a demon 20 years ago <laughs> so, uh, i find it's more instructive when people you know are allowed to fail and learn from their mistakes it's like when you take a little kid and you throw them in the lake they learn how to swim right by just flailing around it's the same idea I feel like some of those kids might drive. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing kids in lakes. Um, I think he just, yeah, like sort of nods, but like shakes his head, like, like what the fuck? <laughs> kind of thing. Um, he says, you should probably get some sleep. And he like walks off into the darkness. Hmm. Shall we call it a call it a night and go to the next day? <laughs> Unless, sure. I mean, well, let's come back to the other two who are back in the room. I think that'd be fair. You guys are mm -hmm. there, you know. Um, I think you guys had a candle lit in the room, and it hasn't melted that much, which lets you know that you haven't been gone that long, <laughs> right? Um, this all happened pretty quickly um, in real world terms. Have that scene. Well, devastated. <laughs> I just look at Arkan and I'm like, "Where's Weary? <laughs> First of all, where's Weary?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, like, what yes. is... He will make it. I hold my stomach, my navel to be precise, because my umbilical cord to the astral plane was damaged. Got damaged. Yeah. It's damaged, mm. and I can feel that. The essence of the demon is gone, but its presence is still in there. It's like it's poisoned, and something is going from the astral plane continuously to my body. It doesn't feel right, but it also leaves me connected to the astral plane in a bad way. Indeed. I think I need to sleep. If we really will come back. I'm sure. Wes comes back. Or something comes back in his name. <laughs> That's not really reassuring, but all right. <laughs> I just go to actual bed because we were on the floor technically, so. <laughs> and yeah. uh, assuming you got a room, because a, a room like yeah. this would like hold four people normally, um, you know, Weary will, Weary, I assume you'll just stumble back in or you go somewhere else. Yeah, I think so. And I think um, maybe I like the idea of Weary um, like saying to them that he realizes that um, people really fail be when they don't have uh, people to help them. And like maybe it's a sort of he's saying it when he thinks they're sleeping, mm. uh, like a concessional thing because that's the only time he allows himself to be vulnerable apparently when people are unconscious <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah like this has continually happened throughout the series right where he thinks he has to do something alone basically fucks it up and then people are like let me help you and then it happens so i think um it's sort of another another time where where he realizes that uh, his he can only do the things that need to be done in this world if he has people helping him yeah. For, yeah. for good and for worse. So I'm guessing due to the experience, guys, guy isn't really asleep. He's just trying to. So he might hear that if that's okay with you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I yeah. left it open to you guys to whatever yeah. you want. It makes sense that you would be able to get restful sleep, right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Maybe you have phantom pain. <laughs> well, yeah, I just got flung across the room by a demon. Yes. Well, you're missing a hand. I think that's yeah, that's I'm missing I mean. a hand. <laughs> you better, you know, you've had a rough day. <laughs> yes, I have had a rough day. Yeah. I like to think that we all smell really nice though, from the fire, like hickory. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, he's uh, he's uh, uh, guys, guys, gonna be a bit uh, uh, so uh, help me paint the scene. Uh, how does Weary say that? Uh, maybe he just maybe when you're like restless, he'll just crack open the indoor kind of thing and it'll be mm -hmm. dark with like some faint light pouring on his face. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And he just sort of says it to the room. All right. And guys, guys like, you should ask for help more often. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And maybe the light allows for like a half of his, um, mouth to show and it is clearly like a smirk or a smile <laughs> ah. yeah guys guys doesn't see it because it's like <laughs> he's trying to sleep but uh, and, but like failing to <laughs> that's why he has his eyes closed did you all get a room with the halfling um oh yeah that you rescued is he in the room with you or is he somewhere or did you guys not do that I'm guessing we did. <laughs> there were four beds, yeah. Sam. Yeah. Yes, he's with us. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember his name. Something Stones Throw. I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> Daverick. Daverick, that's right. Archon, you're having very strange dreams because of your experience having your silver cord damaged, right? Um, I think that, yeah, very strange dreams. And in one of your dreams, you sit up in bed and your companions are asleep. The light is low, the candlelight is, you know, fairly low at this point. And you see Davrick sitting up in bed as well. And he's gently caressing something in his arms. Um, you can't quite make out what it is, but he's holding it and caressing it like it's a baby. What do you do? And muttering things, quiet things. I had enough of supernatural approaches to things for tonight. I wouldn't go into his mind or do anything which has to do with my specific psionic powers. So I will simply confront him with my mouth. I raise myself out of the bed. Are you caressing? What is it you care for? Dabrick from Stone's Throw. And he looks up at you and he smiles. And he says, if I showed it to you, you would kill me. If I showed it to you, you might hunt me to the ends of the earth. I think that's answer enough to my question. If so, and let's see what we will have breakfast. The halfling. And he um, he says, "Don't speak such harsh, ill words." You're going to upset my baby. And then you just like wake up. And I hear him snoring. Yeah, he's asleep. 
Let's take a quick break and we'll figure out what we're doing for the next day. Oh, okay. Uh, when Jessica comes back, I have a question. About life, about death? <laughs> about how exactly the timing of the, of the making camp worked. Why? What do you mean? Because, when... I, because depending if we make camp technically before or after the astral projection dream thing, I can level up, so. Well, I think you would now anyway, right? Because we're sleeping. Yeah, yeah, and also depending on... So, I just wanted to make sure... So, my HP would be half restored. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure with the rest you could do that. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. 11 plus... So, I'm at 20. If... Uh, if for whatever reason that damage had stayed with me, I would have been at two HP. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, so I'm just gonna put the new stuff in. The number of hit points you have really is anyway a li another lie you told. I yeah. guess you have much more. <laughs> yeah, it's always a lie. <laughs> it's always a lie. Executing the truth. Okay, let me make it so that. Hold up. When I read through my gear, I think we have experienced quite a lot. There are really strange things in there. Okay, 
and this should be oh. Oh. And then format. Top. And then I increase my charisma by one. And increase my level. And remove all my XP because that I had just enough. All right. All right. Actually. I would have been a two if I'm gonna put my HP at thirteen because if I didn't rest beforehand, I I would have had been at two HP as well. So yeah, sometimes it's only fair. sometimes you just go fight crazy demons, you know. At night, yes, <laughs> I, and I like that. Uh, at the beginning of the session, Jason was like, I don't expect any combat. I'm like, well, let me tell you. I something. know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <All> right. <laughs> Just okay. wrenches in it. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> yeah. Challenge accepted, yes. <laughs> on, on the next DR, Jason will be like, I, Fraser fucking did it again. <laughs> 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 Throw some wrenches in the plans. Yes. Yo, butcher. <laughs> but yay, now I can actually talk to my sword. Uh, what does it sound what? like? I I don't know. <laughs> I like I, I like to imagine that it's Alan Rickman. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, In Snape's voice. <laughs> Or maybe in Marvin the Robot, the depressed robot yeah. <laughs> in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Uh, Just your sword's always sad. <laughs> so let's do a quick refresher on things we know, avenues to pursue, and that sort of thing. I'm gonna just kind of go through my notes just to kind of so you guys can get your bearings basically, you know, on this fresh day in the Merry Burg of Eingavida. So, Weary, you have your Shadow Vault key, and you have a date with your mentor at some point, I assume. That's a thing that is active. Archon, you know that there's a girl in a well, <laughs> and you think it might be connected to this uh, spirit, um, the name of which is uh, Helikabakt. You believe that they are there's a connection there, but that's a thing. What else do we have on your plate, Archon? Well, the halfling has a baby, and I... <laughs> the halfling is cradling a weird baby in your dream. You don't know what that means. He doesn't have a weird baby in real life. Um, no. But that is a thing to pursue. Do, uh, absolutely. do we know the repercussions from him escaping the astral plane? Or is that part of it? That was just is... one of the, yeah, it was just one of it. I think oh, it just okay. like gets, it was just a disturbing dream. Who knows what it means. Um, so it'll, it'll like, it's like getting teased out. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I maybe. will tell you, but uh, I tell you such dreams every morning, right? So... Exactly right. He's just like, okay, whatever. I've got another weirdo dream. Yeah, um, like while we're eating and, I'm, and we're always like, <laughs> I'm not hungry anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um. We have your missing hand, Geiska. Uh, you know that there's a um, a blood sport promoter slash necromancer, Noel, named uh, Iror, who can allegedly help you with that as long as you give him Davrick's name. Um, we, yeah. So he's uh, the blood sport thing is green blood and what? So green blood and in. glory. Green blood okay. And glory. Uh, so that's the thing we know. We also know that there's an auction of some sort that's going to happen at some point. Um, I'll remind you all that you're here to find a key. 
and there's a good chance that whatever it is is coming through on that auction. Um, so to know that. Um, we know that Daverick is there to participate in that auction because he believes there's going to be a fabulous beast that he can bring back to his employers for their menagerie. And let's see, what other things do we know? Oh, we know that we believe there's a rumor that the boss of the town is a Yonti called Noxu. You have a sword in, on your person, some one of you does, that is like the hereditary, like uh, hereditary uh, bête noire of the Yonti, right? So um, that could be a problematic thing. <laughs> the sword of St. Murian. Yeah, sword of St. Murian, that's right. Um, what are some other little details, some other little happy, happy deets? Um, Let's see, let's see, let's see. I think that might be it. Oh, uh, there was that weird cat that we met in the inn in the astral plane named Kelvane, who's very interested in your sword, right, Kaiska? That was a thing that happened as well. But yeah, so various avenues. You have a, it's a brand new morning. You're eating your, whatever they serve at the corpse delicatessen and do you want that scene or do you want to just tell me how you head out and what are you going to go do? Mm, I, I don't think I need a, like a breakfast scene or anything. I, I think just cutting to what people are doing is fine for me. I'm just going to go chill with my master and be like, okay. why are you such a liar? <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> uh, what about you, Arkon? What are you going to go do? I'm investigating the well. Okay. And I'm sure that the halfling has time to come with me. I don't want to let, uh, let him go alone anywhere. The auction is later in the afternoon, so we can go there later. Sure. Sounds good. Uh, Dabra will go. Uh, Gaiska, what about you? I'm going to fix my hand. <laughs> ah, good. All right. Let's start with the Shadow Court, or the Shadow Seminary. What does it look like on the outside, Weary? Um, I think it's sort of like a... Um like a Notre Dame type cathedral with like gargoyles and, and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So I think it looks um, like it's, yeah, like subverting the church in some ways in that it's like, looks like it's trying to repel faith, but is a place of faith. Mm, interesting. You, you go inside and the main sept area of this cathedral, which is, it's flanked by other buildings. Like it's just on a street, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like by itself or anything. The main sept area, there are a few people dressed in these, these similar, like very like kind of rough spun gray wool robes, right? Um, they're, the, they're the elders of the shadow court, the teachers, the ones who are meant to teach you things. And you know, from your history of this place that there are lots of secret rooms off this main sept secret rooms that lead to um scary uncomfortable places where young uh seminarians are taught uh the taught the shadow trade right mm -hmm. and i think you're expected to give some sort of some sort of like gesture or or something like when you go in like you, or some kind of offering that you make at like, let's say like an offering bowl, like, you know, near where there would be an altar. What do you, what is that? What do you have to do? Um, I kind of like the idea of maybe that's why I had to kill the butcher. So maybe mm -hmm. I like pull, like take my sword out and like squeeze out the blood from it yeah, okay, into okay, the bowl. Nice. Yeah, like that. Yeah. You have a bloody rag that you just like, <laughs> no, it's good. Um, Eventually, order will come up, and he'll find you, and he'll say, "I'm very interested in hearing about your stories." Well, I have been through quite a lot. Uh, I will say that, and what is the truth and what is a lie tends to bleed together in them. I don't know what is real anymore. Hmm, good. That means everything's going according to our plan our plan or your plan he says the plan and he kind of shrugs and says have you had breakfast 
Uh, I lie and say no. <laughs> well, let's go. Let's go find something, and it kind of takes you to the back. There's like a common area, right, where people meet and chat and talk. Um, he'll ask you about what you've been up to. He knows. He knows you've been doing hunter work for the church. He's aware of that. Um, but how much detail do you go into? What do you let him know that you know? Um, I think I tell him just enough to give him context for the situations, but not uh, go into great detail of them, especially uh, like I will go into detail about like my, my failings, like and that I need these companions to complete my tasks, especially in regards to weary wondering if uh, that was a lesson all along, right? Like the, the fact that we were conditioned to do things alone uh, may have been a test in and of itself because perhaps it's like attrition. Like when, if people believe that and go, they go do that, they may complete their tasks or not, but certainly wind up dead and whatnot. He leans back, takes a drink of his, I think he has some milk and sets it down. And he says, it's a very interesting insight, Weary. I, perhaps there is some deep lesson to be learned about, about accepting the help of your companions and knowing your limitations and working within those limitations. And maybe you've learned something really, really important that will serve you well for the rest of your career as a member of the Shadow Court. Or maybe you're just not that good. And then that's, I think, when I place the vault key on the table and I say, or perhaps the people that are good just continually try and try again until they do succeed. Most of us do not get this luxury, Master. He sees the vault key and his, you definitely have his attention now. We'll cut away for that. Archon. So you know where the well is based off the vision you had. Um, what do you do? I go with Dabrik. Yes, Dabrik is with you. He says, so what's in this well, Archon? What are we looking for? We will see or feel or otherwise realize what is in there. And you will be with me because I have the feeling that there's something you still want to tell us. I heard a rumor at breakfast this morning that that butcher, the one who tried to carve me up yesterday, that he died in a fire. That's what I heard. That's bad for the butcher, isn't it? No, he's barbecue. Ha, huh, very funny. And he... Uh, All right. Was I funny? Yes, that was, this, that was, that was a, a six out of 10 on, the, on a humor scale, for sure. You have to tell me more about this humor scale. Not, knee -slapping, on the not knee slappingly funny, but an admirable effort. And right. he continues on to the well. Cool, yeah. And so while we walk to the well, we have a good discussion about humor and what humor is about. And um, Akon, Akon is quite interested in what he has to say. But when we are at the well, he has a plan. Akon has a plan. What's his plan? You're there. To push, to push the halfling into the well. <laughs> if, if, he, if he's not talking, so I hold him over the well. That's my plan. Let's see if he's stupid enough to get too close while I'm around him. Um, you can just grab him. It's fine. Um, he's he's a small little halfling. You can grab him and, and hold him over the well. And he's like he's like kicking around. He's like, "What are you doing? What are you doing? This is madness." Yeah, but I, I want him to panic, so I push yes. him even closer because I want. I, I'm sure that this this is a supernatural being which is in the well, and if I want to have his attention, I need somebody with strong emotions. <laughs> so this is <laughs> very interesting. Very interesting. What an interesting idea. Um, it'll work. Eventually, beneath beneath Deverick's like frightened pleas and cries, beneath that sound, you'll hear a voice down in the well. Small, quiet, but definitely there. And it says, "Who is that? Who's up there?" Push the halfling back. Say, Deverick, I come back to you later. He runs, and then I. <laughs> telepathically start talking with the spirit while climbing down into the well. I guess there's some a ladder or something. Um, 
there's probably no, stuff out. Yeah, there might be a ladder. Sure, that's fine. Um, as you're going down, she says, she says to you, oh, "Well, you have my attention. What matter are we going to be discussing, Archon the Broga?" Spirit of the well. What we will discuss is the evil spirit of Helicobacter, mm. sent by this by a creature, by a colorful creature, into this town long time ago. You tell me everything what you know about it by living so close to it. You get down to the bottom of the well. There is a, it is a functioning well. There is like a, 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 a reservoir of water, but you can wade through the water and get to like a little like cave lip where you see her, this woman. Um, Half a woman is probably the better way to put it. Uh, do you have adventuring gear? I have adventuring gear, yes. Yeah, let me have a torch or something. Um, yes. You're down there, and it looks like she's like laying on her stomach or crawling, but as you move your torchlight closer to her, you're going to see that, in fact, um, it's a torch. She just has a, an upper torso, and she crawls on her, her hands, or you know, on her hands, an upper torso. She looks somewhat uh, youngish, maybe like in her thirties, and her her guts, her intestine, the lower part of her spine are just dragging on the ground behind her as she crawls forward. I'm gonna cut from there. Guys, cut on peak. You can go find the little shack. Um, where Iro does his business uh, for Green Blood and Glory. Just beyond the shack, there's like a there's basically like a fighting pit, um, and this is just this is just a little ways off the main thoroughfare of town. Uh, you're at the shack, though. What do you do? I I call for Iro. Hmm. Knock on the shack. Shack. And um, you knock, and you hear a voice that says. I don't want to hear her to sound. Let's think about it for a moment. Yeah, you hear a voice that says, it says, come in, come in. I come in. And yeah. Inside, you see all manner of bundles of herbs. It's just like a single room. Bundles of herbs hanging from the ceiling jars filled with liquids with strange meaty things floating inside. Um, there's a workbench with rusted cutting tools. And you see Iro, who is wearing a, uh, like a robe, like a, like a, like a, a robe with a hood, but he doesn't have a hood up. Like a, it's, like, it's like a dark silk robe. And he turns, he's a knoll, as you anticipate, a hyena, you know, kind of head. Except there's something about his look that lets you know he's in the business of necromancy. What is it you see on his face? Um, he has, half his face is actually, uh, n well, peeled off, as in, it, it looks like, yeah, I see the skull, basically. Mm, nice. He turns and you see the, you know, you've scrapped with gnolls recently and they're 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 scary. Um, and he turns and you see the, the 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 bone part of his face, and that's even scarier, right? And he says, he looks at you, he sees your stump and says, Ah oh, yes, I heard about you yesterday. Got your hand cut off by the butcher. Died in a fire, did you hear? Yes, I heard. I suppose you want me to sew that back on. That's what your type always wants. Go getting your limbs cut off, and then you need me to sew them back on. Well, I was sent here by Daverick. You know him, right? Daverick Stone's throw. Yes, yes, yes. He intends to bid against me at the Black Auction later today. Hmm. Do you know how much coin Davrick is carrying with him right now? I do not, but he did promise to pay for this. 
and mm -hmm. at least partially. Yes, yes. Well, where's the hand? Let's see what I can do. My power I, is not limitless. I give it him the hand, I guess. Uh, do you, so you do have the hand? You got it from, yes. from Arco? Okay. Yeah. You show it to him. Yes. He says, still fairly fresh. He like takes his like you know finger, kind of knobby finger with a mm -hmm. crusty yellow nail, and jams it into the jams it into like the wound where the of the hand where it got cut off. He kind of sticks his finger in there and kind of moves it around a little bit. And there's a squishing sound, and he pulls it out, mm -hmm. and he like uh, like licks. You can see his like tongue going through the <laughs> going through the bone of his jaw as he like licks this like blood and pus like off of his finger. <laughs> He kind of like, he's like, uh, not too far gone yet. Shouldn't be any trouble. Um, so there's the matter of payment, of course. <clears throat> All right. This is, um, I hope you won't take offense, but you don't look like you're exactly rolling in it. Uh, what do you want me to do then? Mm, I could get the payment from Tafric, I suppose, and that would put me in a stronger position during the auction later today, provided that the auction is in coin. You never know with the black auction. I've got something that you might find more interesting, though. How about you stand for green blood and glory tonight? And... Put your, put your rejuvenated sword hand to use. What does this entail? You will fight a beast or another combatant of my choosing, and if you win, you shall be showered with coin and glory and green blood. Most likely. All right. Uh, have you heard of Calvane? Calvin. Yes, 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 yes. He came by yesterday, practically begging to enter the contest. He looked fearsome indeed. I agreed. Do you know anything about him? <laughs> Only that he is a fearsome warrior. And I've heard rumors that he has a strange split personality. You never know which one you're going to get. I'm going to cut away for a minute. All right. So weary, you've got the, you've put the shadow vault key down and he's look at, he looks at it and he says, looks, he looks up at you and says, where did you get that? Mm, pay no mind to that. What I know is that with this key and or uh, what this unlocks is the secret of a shadow court that um perpetuates the the machinations it's a shadow vault court. don't pretend don't 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 presume to tell me the lore and knowledge of my own order some of well, us what spent I... time reading books not just learning how to roam around in the dark <laughs> um, <laughs> well, what I know is that uh, when I began this journey, I had lost myself, and what has returned myself uh, to this body is the numerous scars and uh, cuts that I have received in the vault. And what it does, uh, I think, is what creates the these machinations for the the court. And it removes the humanity of us, just as the the simpletons at the church who praise the the saints do the same with their religion. That's a very big idea, Weary. A very big idea indeed. You certainly seem to have it all figured out. <clears throat> what a happy circumstance that this key just fell into your lap, just as you were having these eye-opening insights into the nature of our order. 
Hmm. Well, I I still believe that I am a pawn, but I will break. Of course, you're a pawn from it. Are you a pawn, Master? We are all pawns to some degree. There's always someone playing a game, pushing the pieces around. But if you stick around long enough, you get to well, you get elevated to this exalted position. <clears throat> You get to gather up new little pawns and train them to go out into the world and do the bidding of our shadowy faceless masters. <clears throat> very, very rewarding work. <laughs> he said dryly. <laughs> <Yes. British humor. laughs> um, I want to know where the vault for this key is. <sighs> You know, I like to think I did a pretty good job training you with the sword, training you how to move quickly, sneak around in the shadows. And based off the stories you told me and the fact that you're still alive, makes me think I did a good job. I know I did a good job. I probably did a less good job with the more academic aspects of our, of our order. And he stands up, he says, come with me. I go. He takes you to a room, um, and he opens the door, and it's a library. There are scrolls and books on shelves, and you see a few young seminarians um, at tables, uh, clearly, like, you know, slightly overweight and gawky ones um, <laughs> there at their, at their tables, studiously reading these books and learning things. And... And one of them like stands up and wants to like, and he says, he says, Master Order, I learned such and such and such and such. And he's like, that's great. And <laughs> he down, like pushes past that kid and says, <clears throat> the first thing you do is figure out what is in the vault that that key belongs to, and then decide where you want to go from there. <clears throat> and he kind of sets the key down in front of you and says, good luck. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> Peace <laughs> out, master. Um, he says, hmm. if you can't figure it out, maybe one of the younglings will be able to help. And then I think some kid with like, you know, like a big gap in his tooth and a slightly crossed eye looks up at you like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> um, sure. I have an idea of what I think would be cool to find it out, but I guess that would be like a spout lore. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, are you going to do it? Are you going to do the research? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, great. Archon, you're, you're there with this woman who's crawling around, uh, her, her guts hanging out, dragging in the dirt. Purplish guts. She says, so... <clears throat> I can tell Archon of the Broga that you, you, you have insight. You are able to see things that others are not able to see. It's unusual. Okay. And what has your sight drawn you here for? For what purpose? I'm asking about the evil spirit of Helicobacter. Mm. But I guess you're asking for the bigger purpose why we are here. Helicobacter. That's a name I haven't heard in a very, very long time. A very long time. And as she says that, you can, your, your natural psychism will pick up on the fact that she is Helicobacter but she presents herself in this way. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a front, it's a face, right? Good. So I have already found you. Say that again. I think it's time to have a conversation about I'm divided. Mm. What you plan to do with this place? Why are you still here? Why has the creature left you here? How does it feel to be here? What happened to your I need a <laughs> She says, 
<sighs> that is a long and interesting tale. I suppose the question is, where do you want me to begin? Angerweide doesn't only exist in this reality. Yesterday night, I was on the astral planes, and I have seen that it's densely populated where no mortal being should actually be. So I wonder, how do you connect these things? What is your plan? You have learned much already. And she kind of crawls up to a little stone stoop, basically. She crawls up to it and rests herself on there so she can kind of see you better. You're short, so like you're kind of close to eye level now. And she says, you are right. Angavida is not what it seems. Have you ever wondered why the faces of the saints cry? It's not because Angavida is a hive of scum and villainy, though it is truly that. It's more, it's because Angavida was there when the gods lost their great war. They lost their great war and were imprisoned in a cell, a cell with a thousand locks, a cell that requires a thousand keys to free them. Talking about keys and keepers, what do your senses tell you about the keepers hmm. and their destiny? That is a very big question. Perhaps you can find it for yourself. Do like the locals do. Read my entrails. And she like kind of pushes herself back up against the stone wall, letting her guts splay out in front of you. She says, do it. Most of them just want to know how they're going to die. It's always the same. But you might be able to see more. Stick your hands into the squishy bits. Find out what you can find out. I will. And I step forward to her, take my hands and push them into her body, into her stomach and feel the warmth of her guts. And she makes noises that are can only be described as like someone caught up in the throes of passion, almost orgasmic noises, right? Cooing and panting as you wriggle your hands around inside her viscera. Guys, go. <clears throat> yes. Hero says, so what is your answer? Will you fight? Yes. Can. May I ask to fight Kelvin? I think that can be arranged. Yes. yes, yes. All right, then. Put your stump up on the bench. I put my stump on the bench. <laughs> he grabs the hand and um, he undoes your bandages. Um, and he gets a bag filled with needles and thread and salves and tinctures and other things, decoc other decoctions, um, he's laying them all out. And he says, it might itch a little when it's done. <clears throat> and he goes to work. All right. And your hand will be back. I need a constitution roll from you though. On a 10 plus, it goes back with no problems. On a seven to nine, it goes back, but there will be, let's just say, error might have left you a little, a little gift and a miss. Maybe it's not so great. Nine. Nine. He's sewing your hand back up. Does it all. The work is done. 
And he says, now I have to warn you. I've put your hand back using the powers that I draw from the negative plane, that which puts the animating force into your garden variety zombie or skeleton. <clears throat> your hand may sometimes want to It may resist staying itself from time to time. And basically suggesting that sometimes when you might be like wanting to not kill someone, your hand might push forward and like insist on you killing someone, right? You've got just a little bit of death riding along with you. I am not uh, unfamiliar with that. Indeed. Uh, but maybe make a note on your sheet somewhere. All right. So, uh, group. Oh, so I, it's a move. Oh no! Yeah, or just yeah, just just make it. Just put it in your notes somewhere uh, about your hand. That it's got like a little bit of a. Just make a note, something along the lines of like um, hand reattached with the power of the negative plane. Um, um. Weary. There's like a kid there. Are you just like going through the books or what's your approach here? Yeah, um, I was thinking that, yeah, like, like a kind of hitting on the, the Dan Brown aspect of my character again with like uh, unraveling these weird little mysteries within society that have been perpetuated to try to find the vault. Yeah, yeah. Um, this kid is there as you're going through things. Um, he's, uh, he's kind of nosy, honestly. <laughs> he's he's kind of nosy. He, um, and he's, and he's like, you know, kind of looking over your shoulder. He sees the key and he's like, uh, so what kind of information are you looking for? I need to find the, um, what this, uh, the lock for this key, essentially. He's like, mm, mm. He's, he like he's like, can I see it? Mm, sure. He takes the key and he says, he looks at the teeth on the key and he's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I've seen, I've seen something that has, I've seen a lock like this. He says, in fact, <clears throat> and he goes and he gets a book, he kind of thumbs through it, and he goes through like a history of the shadow court and various, various like places in the world where there are shadow seminaries and other, and other meeting houses of the shadow court. And he says, looks like all these places have a vault like this. And he kind of shows you the picture. The, the lock looks the same on all of them. I think any vault will do. It's not the vault that's important, it's the key. Well, how, how am I to find where this key belongs? He's like, I don't know, but I suppose we could research it together. Okay. I'm totally picturing this kid as like Neville Longbottom, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's probably not a bad but not a bad description. Um, <laughs> if you research it with his help, I'll give you a plus one on the roll, but it's gonna be an intelligence roll. So Sure, that I'll need it. <laughs> <laughs> Two six. That'll be plus one because he's helping. <laughs> uh oh, just a six. Oh. <clears throat> he's like, oh, he's like, yeah, this is after a number of hours. He's like, I think I found it. I think I found, I found some writing that matched the runes on the key. He's like going through it. And he begins like reading. You know, he begins like reading it, right? And um, your mother is a part of the Shadow Court. We've established that already in the fiction, right? What was her mm -hmm. call name? Um...
maybe Constance. Oh, good. It's like a woman's name and a, and, a, and an adjective. He says, mm -hmm. he's like, yep, yep, yep. He says, he begins, he tells you a story about a, um, about a shadow court member trapped in a vault. Uh, their name is Constance. And they are trapped in a vault where they are continually doing battle with they're continually doing battle with a demon rat god named Rikisik. And he says, and it appears that after everyone in our party has been killed by the demon rat god, Constance jumps from a ledge with a sacred artifact called the rat stabber and attempts to pierce the rat god's skull with the rat stabber, but he just opens his mouth and swallows her whole. Where is this place? I suppose in the vault. Where is the vault, Neville? <laughs> <laughs> I think he, you actually don't know his name because I think they don't share names, right? Like while they're yeah. while they're studying. Yeah. And he um, he says, um, I, I I I don't know if we even have one here. I mean, maybe 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 one of the maybe one of the masters knows something. Mm, okay. Also, I like the idea of like them not even getting a name until they complete their their mm -hmm. thing right until then they're just like one of the nameless kids or right, whatever yeah, yeah. um okay i guess i guess i'll go to my master and try to get some truth out of him yeah i'm gonna cut over to archon archon you're putting your hand in the guts archon you're gonna get your information that you're looking for but to get that information in exchange, you're also going to get a number of visions related to how you might die. Uh, there's a custom move associated with that. We'll talk about it next time. But if you, but but but, do you want to press forward knowing that? Yes. Okay. You're going to see a bunch of visions of how you might die. Don't tell me that. Uh, there's a custom move that we'll sort that out with later. But for now, you're going to see. You're going to see this this land where Einkavada is, and the rivers that 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 uh, um, that are there, and it just looks like a it looks like just a blasted battlefield, right? This confirms the well, the woman in the well. It confirms her theory or her her thing that she told you, her story that. Um, the gods went to war with a number of like demons. This was back at the beginning of all things, very, very ancient days, and they lost. And basically the demons took over <laughs> the, the gods and, um, and are masquerading as them now, right? And the gods are in a cell, metaphorically speaking, a cell with a thousand locks. And the keepers are the keepers are trying to the keepers believe that the keys are the keys to the locks, and they're trying to restore the gods to this world to cast out the demons that are currently that are currently running things. So it's obvious why the Brogas want to stop the keepers because. If the gods are freed, the war begins again. Right. And the war between gods and demons means death and damnation for all gods. Indeed, indeed. It's better to be ruled by demons than being part, ripped apart in the war. That's an interesting position. I love it. Uh, let's end the session there. <laughs> wow. That's the revelation. <laughs> Keepers. Let's go to let's talk about flags. I think everybody hit a flag, right? Yes. Okay. I think so. Let's go ahead and mark an XP for flags. And then let's look at alignment. 
I still have to change mine at some point. Mm. Which I actually have an idea of what to do, kind of. Uh, because Gaiska, because I have the feeling that Gaiska tries to be good, but he's actually not. So mm. I'm, I could, so I could change that alignment. Uh, we have it now that I think works in terms of getting XP. Defending yeah. those weaker than you. I think they definitely did that with Weary, yes. right? Um, so mark an XP there. Archon, set a relationship to see what happens. Did you do that this time? Well, like, I think I do so with every action, but if you want to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's probably true, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I upset the relationship with uh, the Halfling and uh, with Geiska. Mm, yeah, I'll take that. Well, and I also I, I also liked how you used the information with the butcher as well, right? I thought that was really interesting. Um, yeah. Good, Mark and XP. And then uh, Weary, yours is destroy a symbol of the church. You kind of, well, I don't know if you destroyed a symbol of the church, but you kind of did in a way, <laughs> um, even though you don't realize it. Um, so I'm not sure if it counts. <laughs> but uh, you, you, you struck out for the, for the good guys uh, who are actually the bad. It's confusing. But basically, <laughs> it's just, you, um, the demons have just a little bit less sway now, I think. Um, uh, I'll, let, I'll leave it up to you whether you think you got XP there or not, though. I think you can make a case either way. As for the group questions, I don't have them in front of me, so I'm going to read them off. We have them uh, did we learn something new and important about the world? Yes. Yes, we're going to XP. Uh, did we defeat a notable, notable monster enemy? Yes. Yes, we're going to XP. And did we loot a memorable treasure apart from regaining my own hand? I don't think yeah, so. No, I, don't, I don't think you guys looted a memorable treasure, but uh, but all the rest, uh, the other two are, are fine there. Uh, yes. Great. Cool. Um, I'm going to be. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. I think that was great.